Hello everyone, welcome. Today we're going to be covering the newest fragrance releases you should know about. This is an ongoing series here on my channel where every single Monday we sit back and we talk about some of the newest fragrance releases and we discuss whether or not we want to try them and why. This time I have some really interesting releases and a few sneak previews that I am super excited to share with you. If you're new to this channel, hello, my name is Anya. I love fragrances and I talk about them here every single Monday, Wednesday, and Friday along with a ton of bonus content in between and I do love talking about every Everything from designer, affordable perfumes, niche. There's a good mix here on this channel. So if you're interested in perfumes, definitely do consider subscribing. So first I have a new release from Stefan Amber Lucas. This is going to be a fragrance inspired by a sea serpent. And this is quite interesting because uh, Stefan Amber Lucas, they're known for their snake imagery with their bottles. So I definitely do think that this is quite a winning release just by the look of it, the aesthetic. This is called See My Love. And this fragrance will have notes of of uh, mandarin salt and leather at the top a mid of jasmine and marine notes and then a base of amber musk patchouli and benzoin so you essentially have a marine fragrance with aromatic touches and a bit of like a aquatic touch as well I love the inclusion of leather here. Leather to me is one of those fragrance notes that I've just fallen in love with more and more, especially this year. There have been some really interesting leather fragrances that have dropped that really don't necessarily have that animalic, unbearable animalic touch to them. Rather, they are very smooth and refined leathers that are very magnetic and quite beautiful. So I'm excited to smell this one. To be honest, I haven't really tried a lot of Stefan of Lucas's collection, but I am particularly interested in trying this one out just because it juxtaposes so many different elements, uh, so many different fragrance notes that you typically don't see together. I don't think I've seen a marine fragrance with a touch of leather before so far, so this is one that I would like to try or get my hands on. I also love the bottles. The bottles for Stefan Amber Lucas are some of the best in the industry. Like they're just very unique and very special and kind of unforgettable. So I am quite eager to try this one out if I get the opportunity to do so. Next we have a new release by Dior. This is Sauvage Eau Forte and this will be a release that is part of their permanent line and this will be called uh, this will have notes of lavender and spices at the top, a heart of aquatic notes, and then a base of woods and musk. And the perfumer here is Francis Curtijan. He has been named the creative director of Dior Fragrances. So uh, this is not his first release, but uh, this is his first one, I believe, with the Sauvage line. So I am interested in smelling this perfume simply because of that. However, I'm just not interested really with the Sauvage fragrances. It kind of is a bit of a running joke in the fragrance space uh, that the Sauvage fragrance is kind of like overdone. It's known as like a an F boy fragrance line, and I can't I can't say I disagree. Uh, whenever there is like a guy in my life looking for a new fragrance, it, I'm always telling them like, do not wear Sauvage, <laughs> do not wear Sauvage because it's just so predictable. Every other guy wears it, and it's just. Yeah, I mean, this fragrance will be successful. It will be something I'm interested in smelling, particularly because it's Francis Cordesjean and it's a new Sauvage fragrance. So it is notable, but would I recommend this, like, right off the bat? Probably not, because they're... I mean, this scent profile is just not my favorite. I think that this is just too overdone, and I know that this is a new release, but I don't know. They came out with the Parfum, the Elixir, like how strong can how how strong more strong can it get you know what i mean so i don't know if i'll be super interested in trying this one out but i will try it out next up is memo they are coming out with their indian leather perfume and this is part of their permanent line it's inspired by indian leather and the elephant with lavish yet soft nuances and it's supposed to be inspired by maharajas in india so you have top notes of Cipriol Heart, a heart note of Rose Absolute and Jasmine Absolute, and then a base of Vanilla Bean Extract CO2, Patchouli Oil, Syntrax Resinoid, Oud Oil, and all Olibanum Resinoid. This is listed as a floral, floral woody gourmand perfume, and to be quite honest with you, I will smell this if I, have get, if I get the opportunity because I do love leather sets. But Memo is not necessarily a fragrance house that I get super excited about because 
to me, it just seems that they're trying to just take too much inspiration from other cultures in a way that doesn't feel genuine. It feels a bit disingenuous to see a, I believe they're a French perfume house, kind of just cherry pick other cultures and incorporate them into their perfumes. It just doesn't seem... It seems disingenuous, in my opinion. Maybe that's me being a little bit too nitpicky, but that's why Memo, to me, has never really stood out as a fragrance house that I am obsessed with trying out. I do have a few decants from them. They do their florals in a very beautiful way, but do I get excited about their new releases? No, and that's just my opinion. Um, let me know if you feel differently or if you feel the same. Um, this is just not exciting me. Next up, we have a new release from Goldfield and Banks. This is called Mystic Bliss, and I am super interested in this fragrance because the bottle looks absolutely gorgeous. So you have top notes of fig, frankincense, Guatemala cardamom, kunzea, and mint, a heart of black currant, caramel, clary sage, geranium, immortel, and juniper, and then a base of cedarwood, aladino as salute, Orris root, sandalwood, and vetiver. This I really want to try. I like the caramel touches in here. I like how it's juxtaposed with that um, aromatic set of notes with the sage, the geranium. I feel like this will be very exciting. And of course you have fig in here as well. I feel like fig is a note that we're seeing more and more and more, and I am all here for it. I think it's a great note to include. It adds a little bit of fruitiness, but it's also aromatic, very beautiful. I'm also excited to see sage, and I am curious about the mint because mint is not usually included in fragrances so I expect this to be like a lighter touch of mint or, or I at least hope so because I feel like otherwise it might be a little bit too overpowering. This is one I'm excited about smelling. I feel like this would be a very good fragrance to try out. Goldfield and Banks, I don't own any full bottles from them but I have a few decants and I have almost used one of my decants up for from the brand. They have some really pretty ones and they're especially really good for the summertime. So if you're looking for like a summertime fragrance to get, Goldfield and Banks, they're an Australian brand. They have some really interesting fragrances and they're especially wonderful to wear when it's hot out. Even though right now we're probably going to get into the winter time or into the fall time pretty soon, but we still have a little bit of time, so you can still check them out. I highly recommend them. Next up, we have a new release by Frederick Mal. This is going to be part of their Desert Gems collection, and this fragrance is called Hope. This is a perfume with top notes of cypress and juniper, a heart of pink pepper, and then a base of vetiver, frankincense, and oud wood. The designer or the perfumer here is Dominique Ropion. And again, we have juniper here, which I, I really do like juniper just as a fragrance note in and of itself. So this is something I'm really excited about smelling. I feel like this would be amazing, but I don't really have, I don't, I probably won't buy this because I'm going to be honest, Frederick Mal fragrances are a little bit too expensive for me, but I can definitely appreciate the artistry behind them. I have bought a few decants that I absolutely treasure and love because Frederick Mal, not only do they spotlight their perfumers, which is also wonderful to do, but they also just really have some long lasting, amazing refined fragrances that smell beautiful. So I am excited to smell this one out or to check this one out myself. I I feel like this would be a very interesting fragrance to try out. Okay, next I want to talk about a sneak peek from Navitus. This is going to be another fragrance with Paulina Char. If you don't know Paulina Char, she is a wonderful fragrance content creator here on YouTube. She does some amazing content and she is also a lovely person in real life as well. She is so down to earth and so knowledgeable, wonderful. I've met her uh, twice and she is the loveliest person. So amazing, I, I love her, but she is coming out with her fourth fragrance with Navitus, and this one seems absolutely exciting. So you have here strawberry jam, lychee, coconut, and peach, Indian tuberose, apple granada sorbet, and white flowers. I don't know what this fragrance will smell like, but it sounds absolutely delightful. Um, I 
yeah, I am excited to try this. I will definitely be keeping an eye out for this and I will be informing you as we get more information, but I just wanted to get you a sneak peek in case you might be interested because if you're a gourmand lover, I feel like this is, this is going to be the fragrance for you to try. It smells absolutely, or it sounds like it would smell absolutely amazing and strawberry jam. Who doesn't like strawberry jam? I'm excited about that one. Another release from Viva More, we have Midnight Mischief. This is an extrait de parfum with notes of orange blossom, jasmine, rose, Madagascar vanilla, sandalwood, and amber. Um, this one seems really delightful. I like the dark kind of marketing of it. I think that this will be beautiful, and I also really do like orange blossom, but if I'm being honest, okay, I if I had the opportunity to try this, I absolutely would. Don't get me wrong. This sounds like it would be absolutely delightful, and I do love florals. However, I'm kind of excited about the Navitus one, if I had to compare, because Viva More and Navitus are kind of sister brands. Um, so if I had to choose one, I would choose the Pauline Nishar one. But I feel like if you really like floral perfumes, this one is a really good one to try out as well. Viva More has some really beautiful scents. Uh, they, are, they are a really good, affordable niche perfume house to try out. I have uh, recommended their perfumes several times in the past. They have some really good ones and they do gourmands rather well. This one is going to be more of a floral but they do their gourmands extremely well. I'm always impressed by them, um, and I would definitely be interested in trying this one out. Uh, yeah, Midnight Mischief. I feel like this is a perfect perfume to kind of like get into the fall time. So yes, this one is exciting as well. Let's see, what else do we have? Okay, so now we have a new release from La Tafa. They keep coming out with some really interesting bottles, and this one is no exception. This is gonna be called Niche Emirati Mughal Fort. <laughs> And this is going to be a warm, spicy, ambery fragrance with top notes of pimento and cardamom, a mid of caramel and cedar, and then a base of amber, musk, and vanilla. This bottle is kind of insane. It's a bit, like last week's release from Latafo, that one was like this like serpent head, but this one is even more intriguing. Um, yeah, this is essentially a musky, warm, spicy, ambery perfume. I would be interested in trying this. Um, especially since I haven't really tried a lot from La Tafa that, have, that has pimento in it. There's one, Oud Mood, that I've tried that did have the pimento note. So I would be interested in trying this one out. But, yeah, is anyone else like, kind of intrigued by like their bottle design lately? Um, their bottles have been a little bit insane. Um, so, yeah, this one, this one looks like a building. So, there you go. Um, another fragrance, this one is from the French brand Les... Indemodable. Um, Les Indemodable. I'm sorry, my French keeps getting worse by the day. This is Oranger Sirocco, a warm, spicy cinnamon perfume. Sounds perfect for fall with notes of orange blossom, cinnamon, and spices. I haven't tried this brand before, so I can't really make a judgment on this really. Um, but I feel like this would be a good fragrance to try for the fall time cinnamon i have said this a few times but i'll say it again cinnamon to me can kind of be a finicky note i don't like to blind buy cinnamon fragrances because sometimes cinnamon can be very smooth and beautiful sometimes it can be a little bit scratchy so there you go um so i'm kind of not sure about this one last but not least we have some new releases by carl Lagerfeld. these are going to be the iconic woman and men's perfume First, the woman's perfume is the rose gold one with notes of raspberry, jasmine, and sandalwood. And then the men's version is an aromatic coconut scent with top notes of geranium, a mid of coconut leaf, and then a base of woody notes and tonka bean. This is one of those uh, releases that at face value, it looks pretty interesting just in terms of the notes. I don't think I'll get this. I mean, I'll smell it if I see it in store. I don't think I will. It might be available in Europe, but I can't say I'd be too interested in getting a bottle that looks like this and I've talked time and time again about how to me it's really important to have a good experience when having a fragrance and sometimes I like to have an experience that's a little bit more luxurious and this to me does not give that. That alarm is being very loud. This is what happens when you live in the city. You get, you get the sirens constantly all the time. All right, so that's it for this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this one and found it intriguing. Uh, let me know what releases you're excited about or is there anything that you're just not into? Um, if you're interested in catching up with last week's video, I have a playlist down below with all my new fragrance releases videos. Um, they're all available for you to binge watch. I go through 
a ton of different fragrance releases in those videos constantly every single week so if you've missed one you can check it down there but yeah that's pretty much it for this video thank you for watching till the end and i will see you next time bye